So at the moment we're in the rear of the vehicle um, and this is the rear on the passenger side. I've removed the seat cushions from the lounge area and then you lift up this and you can see down here, this here is the handle for the awning. So you can also access that through this cupboard door from the outside. Um, it's in grips down there so you just want to gently pull and it will release it from the two grips and same when you're stowing it back away just place it over the grips and push it in to secure it while you're traveling. So the awning handle slots into this at the front of the awning so at the moment it's rotated so that it sits behind the slot and won't come out accidentally. To remove that I'm just going to turn it until it's in the right position and then as you can see it slides out. So if we're looking at that we just push it in, rotate it and now it's locked behind there and won't come out. So now that the awning's in the slot what you would want to do is raise this up so it's sort of like that. Um, you can extend the length if you find you're needing more length. So to do that you would loosen off this black section and then this part of the handle would extend out. Um, if you don't need extra length then you place your left hand over this to grip it, this part doesn't rotate, and then you put your right hand here and you simply rotate it around like so and that will cause this to come out. When you're removing the pole, be very careful about how you do it so that the metal on the end of the pole doesn't bang onto the vehicle and cause damage to the paintwork. Once the awning is extended, it'll look something like this. We're going to want to put the legs down so that we can secure it. So move over here, squeeze backwards on this and pull this down. You're then going to want to flatten this clip as that's going to be the foot for the leg when we lower it fully. So to secure the legs at the right height, you're going to raise this peg and push it into position. Then you're going to add some pegs into the holes on either side here. So to take the awning down, you're going to release these pegs at the side and then slide the legs back up. Once the leg is contracted again, push it up into the gap and then squeeze it backwards so it sits behind there, like so. So put your leg up, push back against it, slide it into position and it should clip onto the little foot there. Okay, so here we have the control panel. This controls most of the functions of the components that are in the camper part. I'm going to switch the control panel on to begin with. That means we can now operate other things. So as you notice when I press that, the lights came on above. Uh, you can switch the lights off down there by the door pillar. So this button here operates the water pump. If you want to run the water in either of the sinks or the shower, you need to have this switched on. Obviously don't leave it on when the water isn't in use because it will be consuming power. This one here does the awning light. So on, behind this, on the exterior of the vehicle, you have an awning light, which is that one. And then finally you have this. This allows you to toggle between the different vehicle batteries. So at the moment we're running off of the leisure battery. When I press this, we're now running off of the vehicle battery, which has slightly more power in it today. I'm going to switch the vehicle battery off because I don't want to drain that. And you can see the leisure battery is at fair at the moment, so just slightly less than the vehicle battery. Switch off the awning light, switch off the pump because I'm not using them. On this side, we have the menu buttons. So I can toggle. So here's the main menu. And then I can toggle through different things and alter them. So if I wanted to set, say, an oven timer, I could do that here. Uh, you can also set an alarm for the morning. And you can set the clock. So this clock's not currently correct. So I'm going to press the middle button to enter the clock settings. And then I'm going to change this to change the hour. So the hour at the moment is noon. And it's a little after that. So you select that and then that's the correct minuteage, select that. I don't need to set an alarm, so I can go back in, clock's now correct, carry on through. My water tank fill is off, my battery current is showing there, the external temperature shows here, 
waste water is 50% full, fresh water is 75% full. Main supply we aren't currently connected, so that's off. Vehicle battery, as I said before, is good. Leisure battery is fair. And that's everything we need to know. This is the temperature inside the vehicle at this moment in time. We've already discussed the awning handle earlier. Um, I just wanted to show you what's underneath the rear bench seat here. So we have the two leisure batteries. Um, obviously, very important that they are not covered or damaged. Um, so please don't use this as a storage area. And then what you have here at the back is your power management. So in order to use the mains electrical power, you need to complete a safety test first. So the way we do that, we first of all ensure that all of the power in the camper part of the vehicle is switched off. So that's by pressing the main power switch on the power bank above the side loading door. Once everything is switched off and nothing is consuming power, e.g. the lights or um, the fridge, then you can go ahead and um, do your electrical safety test. So you're going to want to switch this on here. It's in the on position at the moment. Then you raise this cover and under here you're going to press this black square button. Now I'm not connected to mains at the moment so this won't happen as it should but when you press this button this switch here should flick down. If it does that you have your electrical safety test completed so you can just push that trip switch back up and use all the power from the main supply as normal. If this does not flick down after you've pressed the safety test button above it, there is an issue somewhere in the power chain. Um, and at that point you would need to disconnect the vehicle from main supply um, and find an alternative main supply power source. Light switch controls from the vehicle are down here underneath the passenger seat. So this button here does the main lights and this button here does the strip lights over the table. Okay, so to operate the side step, it's just this button here and we're gonna open it up and then you can close it back away when you're done. That will retract automatically when the key is in the ignition. To close the blinds across the windows, you pinch where the finger holes are, then pull. In the case of the windscreen, you need to bring out the other blind from over there to meet this one. And then you can fasten them both together by releasing. I'm gonna release this now, push it back, and then to stow it away, you just need to pop it back in by pinching and clipping it back into the socket. All of the side windows have both fly screens and blinds fitted to them. So you can disconnect them like so by pulling back on this and then raising that. Uh, and then to raise the blind up, literally just a case of pushing it upwards and then connecting that over the top of the fly screen. To open these side windows, you just pull up on each of the handles and then you can push the window open once all the handles are released. The window fitted to the side loading door operates differently to the other windows in the side panels. So on your other windows, you can just lift this handle straight up. If you attempt to pull this one on the side loading door, you risk breaking this handle. Instead, what you have to do is push in on the center button and then lift the handle. So again, over here, center button, push in and lift the handle. If you try and push, pull this handle up without pressing in on that button, it just won't come further than there. And if you force it, you will break it. To close, just push it back down till it clicks. Okay, so to operate this roof hatch, all I'm going to do is put my hands on the grips, pull them inwards and then push up on them. Bringing it down is in reverse, so again pull inward and pull down. So as you can see, both front seats swivel and it's super easy to operate these. You're just going to lift up this handle and then give the seat a push. So 
the dining table here both extends and can be taken outside. To extend it, you would just pull down on this and then slide this piece around. To return it, it's the same thing again. Pull down and turn this back around. So to take this table outside, uh, you need two hands for this, so I'll do it in a second. You push down on this, which releases it, and then you lift the table up and off that bar along the back. So having released the table, I've carried it outside, hooked it over the bar here, and now you can dine outside under the awning. To lock the table back in place, you're going to push up on this button here, and that locks the table back in place. So for the power supply over the counter, you're just going to press down on this, which releases it, and then drag it up. So you can see there you've got three pin plugs and two USBs underneath. Switch it on like that and plug in and use as normal. This will only work on mains power. Microwave is located under the kitchen unit and will only run off the mains power as it's plugged in with a three pin plug. To the other side of the kitchen unit near the lounge area, you have the fridge. Uh, this is a 90 litre fridge with um, pockets in the door there and storage inside. There's also an ice box here. We don't recommend that you leave the fridge on while driving. You're going to want to just switch that on enough to cool it and then use it for periods of cooling. Leaving it on full time will drain the leisure battery. So under here, we have a three burner hob and a sink. Sink is super easy. Pull the tap over the sink so you don't soak the counter. Lift the tap and then you can turn left for hot and right for cold. When you're done, close off the tap, move it to the side again, and you can take the plug out to drain. Over here, you have three different hobs. The three flows are here. You're going to press down on the ignition, which will create a spark like this. You can see that coming out there. And then you turn these to give yourself the gas flow to catch onto the spark, just like your hob at home. Make sure this is out of the way when you go to close this. Don't put anything hot on this surface because it will damage it and this will melt the rubber pieces on the surface. Um, also very important. We don't want any sauces or sediments going down the sink. There should be only liquids going down there so that the waste tank continues to drain well. I'll now quickly walk you through the items that we provide with every rental. You can see over here the doormat that we provide. Down here in this bottom drawer, if I can do this one-handed, we have the toilet chemicals. This drawer should be empty upon collection. In this drawer, you'll find the placemats and the coasters, along with a 16 piece cutlery set. We provide the placemats so that you can have some heat protection as these surfaces are not heat resistant. In the center cupboard here, the top shelf contains a kettle and uh, your anti-back wipes. The kettle is a camping kettle used on the gas hob. And lower down in the cupboard, you'll find a small waste bin and a dustpan and brush. Over here are the remainder of the items. So we provide four enamel mugs. They are camping mugs, so you can hold them over a heat source to reheat beverages. Uh, you have four plastic cups, a corkscrew, a can opener, four plastic plates, four plastic bowls, an ice cube tray for the freezer compartment, and a chopping board. The pegs for the awning are located under the dining seat. So to access that, you're just gonna remove this cushion and then lift up the seat box. And then you'll see down there, we have four pegs. Also stored under the dining seat is the mains cable for hooking up to mains power, the extension hose if you need to refill the water tank, and we include two camping chairs for you. The light switch control for the bathroom is over here. So it's this button here that's off. 
and that's on. Okay, so before you use the toilet, you'll want to switch on the water pump. You'll then have your lavatory session and press the blue button to flush, which will go like so. Once it's flushed and you're happy with the amount of water, press this and all of the uh, toilet contents will empty into the toilet cassette. Press that again to close the hole over the cassette so you don't have any bad smells and again close the lid to block any smells. Okay, quick demonstration of how we empty the set for the cassette. You turn your key to unlock it, press both buttons in, lower the door, hands in, you want to lift the cassette gently over the ridge, pull out slide it closed, take it fully out, pop it down. Now at this point you're going to raise this tube up, unscrew the top here and pour in the chemicals. So you're going to do the blue one first, follow the instructions on the packet, let it sit to disintegrate the waste. Then we're going to close this up, give it a swill, undo it again empty it out. So for that you're just going to turn this upside down over a toilet bowl. Then we're going to put the pink chemicals in. In there again, close this up, let it sit, give it a swill, open it again and again flip it upside down and empty this tube into a toilet bowl. When that's all done and the cassette's empty we close this back up lift this up here and this will automatically open back up on entry. Close your tube, close and lock the door. For the sink operation you'll also need the water pump on. It's very simple, you pull down to open the sink, you have a plug here which you can use or not, rotate your tap outwards and then use it as per the kitchen tap. So up for water, down for off. And then you can see underneath you have hot and cold running water in this. Close the tap away and shut the sink when you're done. Shower operation is very simple, same as the taps. You're just going to want to lift this to operate the shower. Above the sink you have a mirror cabinet. So to open you're just going to push the sides back and then you can store toiletries in here in these sections. To close, you just push it backwards again. Okay, so storage space. Unfortunately, you cannot store anything under either of the lounge seats. That is because they have electrical and gas equipment under both. You do, however, have two very large drawers to either side of the lounge seats. So there's two identical ones here and two identical ones here. Uh, on the driver's side, you have a large wardrobe with a hanging rail and on the passenger side you have a large wardrobe with shelf storage. So on either side of the lounge area above the seats you also have these overhead lockers. So again same operation press in on the button and lift up. Okay, so we're now looking at the rear lounge and we're going to turn this rear lounge into a bed. As you can see, neither of these cupboards is for storage. Um, we have electrical stuff under here and we have gas stuff under there. So to convert this to a bed, first of all, you need to unhook the straps. So these are just on press studs. I've done the one at the far side and now I'm just going to do this. You just take it off the press stud so it hangs loose. Once that's off you can then lift out the uh, wooden section underneath. So this pulls out like so. And then you're going to fill that middle space with the cushions. So I'll show you what that looks like in a second. So to fill that central space we're going to take these side cushions off the wall. So they're on Velcro, so you just take those off like so. They would have connected onto this. And then I'm going to just lift this one-handed 
and slot it into the centre there. And I'll do the same with the opposite cushion and we'll have a complete bed. So as you can see here, I have top and tailed the cushions to make them fit more easily. You do have to apply a little bit of weight to wedge them into the space and then you have your bed. This is approximately six feet in length. We do recommend that you put a mattress topper on this. Some more lights to make a note of. At either side of the rear lounge you have a reading light so that operates by touch. There are two brightness settings and then touch it again to turn it off. Up here you can control the strip lights and the main lights like so so you can operate them from the bed. So on the driver's side in the rear corner you'll find the controls for the Truma um, combi boiler. Um, just below that as well you have two USB sockets that run off of the leisure battery. So to operate the heating or the hot water first of all press this middle button uh, and you'll see the panel comes alive. Uh, this here is for your temperature settings for inside the vehicle so if I start to rotate you can see different items flash I'm going to select this first at the moment it's off if I wanted to turn the heating on I would just select the temperature that was ambient and then press enter to confirm that you'll see now that other symbols have illuminated this symbol here controls the hot water so if I select that um, and then rotate through the options I can either boost it, have it on hot, or set it on an eco setting. Um, if you switch boost, it will immediately come on and start to heat the hot water. There's no water in the vehicle at present, so I'm going to leave this on eco for now. This symbol here allows you to select the source for the boiler. So you can run it off of gas, a mix of gas and electricity, or simply just electricity. Um, I'm going to leave it on gas for now. Uh, while well, we're stationary and not plugged into mains. Finally you have a fan speed so you have an eco setting high um, we're gonna leave it on eco for now and then because I'm not actually staying in this vehicle I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna rotate this right down to off and press enter. Now you'll also notice on the home screen that down at the bottom you have clocks so again you just keep rotating the wheel until you get there. This allows you to set a timer for the heating and the hot water. Okay so to unlock the water tank you're going to insert the key, turn it once to the left. Then you need to push on with quite a bit of force and continue to turn to the left. This will then release. To lock it again push it back in and then turn clockwise. When it's locked, this will spin, but not come out. 